Hello, this is Dr. Alf Garbett again uh, for the ACA Rehab Council's journal. I'm in the Los La Crescenta area of uh, Los Angeles. We're going to cover today the multifidus, which is again a muscle I find a lot of times is not uh, addressed, but it can be a factor in the stability of the low back and it also can be a source of pain that is overlooked. And the multifidus well, let me back up just a little bit here. The work that I'm going to show you, the basic idea came from Dr. Raymond Nimmo of the Nimmo technique or, or the receptor tonus technique. Uh, I was uh, one of his early instructors under him, and I believe I probably trained more with him than anybody else in the world, uh, and like over 16, like 16 seminars with he and Dr. Vanderson, the research assistant. So they had developed work using a what they call a T-bar in the thoracic area uh, and working intercostals and trying to stimulate the uh, sympathetic ganglions. So I took this about 1976, 77 and developed working on the multifidus and the multifidus rotatories combination in the thoracic area and showed Dr. Nimowet and he adapted it into his program. So again, what we're going to look at here in this model, the multifidus basically are going to be going from the sacral area all the way up to the lower cervicals. And it's the deep intrinsic muscles in the spine that help create stability and some rotation. The deepest fibers are going to attach to the transverse process and then go up to the next segment above, to the spinous process. So it's going to be going here. The next higher level, more superficial, there's going to be three layers, is going to be attaching around the, uh, the transverse, the proximal portion of the transverse, and coming up two or three levels to the spinous processes above. And the most superficial, again, will be attaching to the proximal portion of the transverse and coming up three or four levels above. So we got these di different layers. The deepest one is the one that goes up the shortest. The more superficial, the higher it goes. If it was the other way around, the compression would interfere with the movement. And again, these are very important for stabilization of the back. And I think Dr. McGill, Stuart McGill, has done research in this area also. So there may be other exercises, stretches, things. I'm going to show you a soft tissue mobilization technique. So this pressure technique will come under soft tissue mobilization and using a T-bar. These T-bars can be gotten online from different people. This, I'm using a small one. This is not what you're commonly going to use in the lumbar area, but just to show you in detail work. You don't want something real huge. Maybe something 50% uh, wider would be okay. And when you're working with the individual, they're going to be face down. Palpate the, sp uh, the spinous processes. And what I do is I come real close to it with my fingers here. Don't go out too far. You push on the transverse processes, you can fracture them. There have been some people not paying attention have, have broken off a, a transverse sometimes with pressure going anterior. And so you want to stay in this, the groove here. We're going to stay in here around the lamina where this, this muscle belly is predominantly going to be. So we're going to be pushing in here and always keep your fingertips on the spinuses and you're going to be on the opposite side of where you're sitting and that's where you're going to work. You're going to be pushing straight forward. You only want to use 8 to maybe 12 pounds of pressure. So you may want to go on a scale and push on and get a feel of it. You do not want to push real hard. You can hurt somebody if you go digging too hard. Always, before you start, tell a person, you know, I'm looking for muscles that are overly tight that are going to cause some of the pain. If the muscles, you don't want to use the term hypertonic with a patient, but that's what you're looking for, something hypertonic. Hypertonic muscle will be tender to palpation. So that's kind of what you're looking for. Now, with experience, I can palpate through the, the tip of this. I've done this so much for like 37, 38 years that I actually can palpate through that and feel the different resistances. But when you're starting off, can I use discomfort? So tell the patient, let me know where it's sensitive. If it's too painful, tell me and I'll lessen it up. And always listen to the patient. Do not get in there and grind on it. This is not a grinding technique that will aggravate these things. It's a static pressure for about 8 to 10, 12 seconds. 
and then leave it alone, go to another area. Try to find another area of involvement and then come back to it again. You can do the same area two or three times. But I cannot overemphasize, do not grind on it. Do not try to do cross-fiction fiber on it with this tool. Do not do that. Static pressure, just going posterior to anterior, hold it. That has inhibitory qualities to the reflex arc going on. We want to calm it down. So doing that. Then when you're on the other side, ideally, go to the other side of the patient where, again, fingertips are here. These are going to be landmarks to keep you from wandering. And really pay attention. With time, you also feel different resistance in the tissues. So we can go from uh, the sacrum. I do not like going down here because you may be pushing on a foramen or nerve. But maybe the very top or just staying at L5, S1 area and work your way up. That can be done all the way up to, say, C7. Uh, you can work it. But here I'm mostly looking at talking about the lumbar. So if we go up in the thoracic area, the rotatories are going to be more superficial and you'll catch them too, which could be of some importance. There are techniques like in PNF where you get uh, post-isometric stretch. There's other things to do. These most of the time are hypertonic because something else is wrong a lot of times. They're compensating for something like hypertonic hip flexors or something else. So I still like to do these because these get facilitated sometimes where they're just going on and on and on. And you have to calm these down too. So yes, go find what's primarily involved first. You're going to deal with that too. But make sure you don't miss this because it can sometimes perpetuate back pain and some dysfunction in the area. On somebody who's a subacute disc, I can use on this. I won't use it on a real hot disc patient, but when they become subacute, a lot of times these will become hypertonic trying to you know, lock the area up and guard it. And then sometimes to help speed up the recovery, I can use this when they start getting less acute. Again, paying attention to the, the pressure that you use. So I hope this is something that will be of some help, an additional tool to everything else you're doing. Again, you want to be global with this because, like I said, most of the time this is there because there's something else happening, so we got to find that too. And I thank Dr. Nimmo for his work. Uh, he's uh, not been getting enough credit out there. He was one of the very first chiropractors to be talking about muscles back in the late 50s and early 60s. And he was one of the very first people talking about myofascial release, soft tissue mobilization, trigger points, etc. So I want to give a little a validation to his work, and I hope this will be of some help to you and your patients. Thank you.